Hello and welcome to PM Personality Profile. My name is Nana Ansakwao the Fourth, and today I am talking to the legendary Dr. Thomas Mentzer, one of our own, one of the greatest inventors of all times. And probably, if history is still written, and history is ever written, we cannot ignore the name Dr. Thomas Mentzer. Amazing. By the mere fact that you're even watching this, particularly on the internet, even on your LED TVs, has got something to do with what he invented. If you receive a text message, if you receive an email, Facebook, YouTube, Google, has got something to do with Dr. Thomas Mentor. You want to stay tuned, and particularly if you want to inspire your young ones to believe in technology, then this is the personality profile for you. Stay tuned as I meet up with our own legendary Dr. Thomas Mentor. We're coming back. Well, 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 thank you for staying and welcome back. This is always the exciting part as I tell you where we get to, uh, you know, get personal with our guest. Now the right stuff comes in black too, as I said in the intro. And every now and then there's this one of our own kind, you know, who does or goes the extra mile and the honor and glory he gets, you know, comes back and we all tap into it and all rejoice that yes, our own did it too. Doc, thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Nana and Sakwa. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I'm so excited to be on your show. I, I am honored. I am, really, I am really, really, really honored. Uh, Doc, you know, let me say congratulations on behalf of all black men, you know, in Africa and beyond, you. that your determination, your achievements, uh, those are the things that we all tap in and, you know, pride ourselves with. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank but you, you see, I, I want to go back to the days of Kwame, when, you know, you're no, not uh. a professor, you know. <laughs> <laughs> when mom or dad will call me, hey, Kwame, bro, you know, uh -huh. come and do uh -huh. this. Uh -huh. You know, this, this was in Ashdown, Kumasi. Yes. How, how was growing up, you know, those, how what was growing up like? Oh, that was wonderful. I was just like any typical kid. Yeah. And I am. And I went to Wesley College Practice School. Okay. SHS. Okay. So, well. Now, even at that age, you know, I was good in math and science. Okay. Uh, and that was before I went to a decided college. Okay. Yeah. And as you know, um, my dad was reading newspapers to me. Okay. At the, at the young age? At that young age. So at the age of four, technically, I was reading newspapers flawlessly. That's very early. Yeah. So I used to pride myself to read it in front of adults. They, go, <laughs> <laughs> they, were, all, they were, were all excited to see this kid. Amused. Yes, amused <laughs> to pronounce all the big words mm -hmm. and everything. And then my next door neighbor, mm -hmm. uh, you know, was uh, from Togo. Mm -hmm. So he speaks French. Actually, he was teaching French in the schools. Okay. So at the age of eight, I was speaking French. Just by, you know, communicating with the next door neighbor. The next door neighbor, yeah. You've always had that passion to learn. Yes. So I would come home and I listen to the news radio on French. Wow. So I was, you know, practicing it at that age. How, how many siblings do you have? Um, in my book, The Right Stuff, mm -hmm. you will see five of us. Okay. All guys. Okay. And I usually tease people because they see this. I ask them, uh, out of five, who do you think uh, looks more like me? <laughs> and if they don't cheat and read, you know, below it, uh -huh. I'm sitting at the bottom left. You know, they go, this guy is serious. So, uh, but uh, Joseph was. Uh, educated in UK, he's my, 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 one of my brothers. In fact, he just came back. Uh, and uh, Usu, 
Uh, my middle name is Ousu too. Okay. Uh -huh. he's, in, he's in Canada as we speak. He came here and went back. So I had a great childhood, you know, and like you told me earlier, there are coincidences and that time that defining moment. That defining moment. We'll get to defining moment. Okay. Uh, was your mom educated? Yes. Mom is educated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And dad is educated. Yes. That, that must be, you know, I mean, they say education is the key which opens doors. I mean, I mean that must made a big change in the lives of the children of these two couples. Oh, yeah. So they pushed education. Because back then, I'm yes. sure not many mothers were educated. Yes. Yeah, she, you know, she, she actually was educated business person mm. like my dad but treated in cloth okay you know and then my dad uh, owned large cocoa farms okay and was shipping cocoa products to France you know to uh -huh. their chocolate factories in France okay so at some point when the French came and talking to my dad because I was fluent in French, I was translating for him <laughs> at that age. <laughs> yeah, so, what, what were you then, by 13, 10? Oh, I, I was even before then. 10, you know, I was still translating, you know, for my dad. He must have been proud at that age. Oh, yeah, yeah. Kwame, yeah, yeah. come, 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 come. Come and explain. Uh -huh. yeah, what <laughs> explain I, to them that the cuckoo was bad this season. Yeah, <laughs> and then uh, if I'm, I'm signing a contract, come and read here for me, you know, uh -huh. in French. Now translated at that age, and uh, so everybody liked me. Mm -hmm. uh, they were just curious at this little kid. So when I got to thirteen, that's when I went to Adisada College mm -hmm. from uh, Wesley College Practice School. Okay. So it was great to be admitted to a disco. You know, mm -hmm. I went the Ashton boy in a disco. Uh, we had a great, uh, what do you call it, uh, headmaster, Ulins Pobi. Mm -hmm. Everybody remembers him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He was very strict. Wow. Yeah. If, if you're not wearing the Adesada white and black tie or something, he said, meet me in your office, in my office. <laughs> 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 and you know what that means. Uh, exactly. You can't come from Ashton wearing some other, this thing. You got to obey the school rules. What, what, what was one culture shock from Ashton to Adesado? I mean, from one, you know, what, what was the biggest culture shock? Or that you, that well, you... well, the, uh, when you're junior then, mm. you know, first of all, I recently spoke at a disco mm -hmm. for their speech day. Okay. So I went back to look at my uh, my dormitory, uh -huh. you know, and of course we're sleeping in bunker berth. So I'm on top. Yeah. When you're junior, you're on top. Yeah. You know, so the seniors below you can either <laughs> get up, <laughs> that kind of <laughs> stuff. You know, at least uh, tell you what to do. Uh -huh. So that was a culture shock. Okay. You know, hey, you know, discipline. So discipline comes from the headmaster, but still you have the seniors also mm -hmm. to look up to. Scrubbing bathhouse and you tidying had to do, up your you compound. You had to do all that. You have to do errands. You have to do everything. You know, mm -hmm. uh, you learn from them. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. So I went from there all the way to become even a prefect. Okay. You know, uh, in later years. So uh, good school, well disciplined, and you learn a lot. And mm -hmm. and of course. Everybody from different parts of Ghana, you know, different district. Speak, sometimes they speak different, you know, like Ghana, Ewe. Everybody's together. The only thing that binds us all is who can excel. Yeah. Yeah. And so that was good. He learned to be friends, mm -hmm. you know, no ethnicity, he learned to be friends yeah. and everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's something that I don't think is lost, but we seem to be losing it. You know, those days you used to do a whole five years yes. and then probably do an extra two years, yes. lower and upper. So, you know, if somebody said they were at this school, it was, it was literally like a second hometown. Yes, yes, you it know. is. Uh, I mean, do you wish we continued that? You mean the O&A levels? The o &A yes, levels. yes, yes, because the standards are very high. Very high. Mm. The British still have it. Yeah. 
standards are very high. Mm -hmm. I used to say people that did that, MIT, the best schools, when they get there, they were ahead of the whites. Wow. Yeah, wow. they were ahead of the whites. Like my friend, Adis, uh, uh, Isaiah Blankson. Mm -hmm. When he was there, at one time there were 100 students from Ghana. First day, he sat in class. Everybody, all the whites stayed. They would come to the first row where he was sitting. The results of the exam came, he scored 100. The next person scored 60. Next day, everybody wanted to sit at the front. <laughs> you know, so his story. The right stuff comes in black. There too. you. I put his name in there, and so that was the that was the the class. That was the you know we were we were, you know, when it comes to knowledge, we were the epito epitome of excellence. So from a disco yes. to tech, then, yes, Kwame Nkrumah University, yes. science and technology, yes. Uh, when you were leaving at this school to tech, what, 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 by then had you chosen your career path? Well, I was very good in math and sciences. Speech day, I won so many prizes mm -hmm. first, you know, physics, math, chemistry, you know. So when I got to a disco after form, uh, after sixth form, I was excited. And there too, you gotta, you gotta fit in. Mm -hmm. You know, they put me in Katanga University Hall, <laughs> <laughs> where they were actually pond you, yeah. they put you in the pond. <laughs> you know, I don't know whether heads first or <laughs> whatever. <laughs> so, so that was a cultural shock. I used to play in the band. I used to play saxophone. You see that, that in my book. Okay. With Sam Mensa and, and, uh, and so uh, in tech, also we were serious in mm. the book. I did chemical engineering, very, very serious. Now, uh, I remember, well, yeah, there's a conversation between your dad and his peers. Yes. And they like, oh, Kwame is brilliant. Let him go and do chemical engineering. Exactly. Now, you know what engineering is, so you just put two and two together and say, well, just do the chemical aspect of yes, it. Yes, do the, you know, because uh, that allows you to work in areas like oil refinery, all the petroleum products, all the plastics, pharmaceutical. Chemical engineering is broad. Mm. So it gives you a broad base, you know, in engineering. So I excelled in that, I excelled at tech in that. And then, uh, so I had the French government scholarship, as you know, to do fellowship for PhD work in France. Now, th th that's one interesting bit, because I know that the French, you know, took particular interest in your progress. Yes. I, I'm just, wh where did they find you? How did they find you? Why were they so interested? interested well, in they come in and said, oh, we are in Ghana and everybody in Ghana goes to UK. Hmm. Can we find somebody in Ghana that will come to France so that he learns our stuff? You know, Ghana mm -hmm. want to buy airplanes, they buy Airbus. Mm -hmm. They want to buy nuclear reactors. You know, France is very good in those mm -hmm. things. They want to learn, uh, 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 you know, where I went, Institut de Génie Chimique. That was in Toulouse. Okay. Toulouse where, is where Airbus is all the aerospatial, everything is there. Okay, so I, that's where I went to school. And the professors, you know, Henry Gibert came from that school. So by the time he moved to Montpellier, and Montpellier was my main place, you know, we go to Toulouse, you know. So this guy uh, wanted to make sure that I learned all the practical aspects, practical aspects, you know, of chemical engineering. Doc, I mean, so it, it, this, I'll come back to France again, but then it just goes back to that faithful day yes. or that faithful neighbor yes. who happens to come from Togo, yes. speaks French, yes. you pick up an interest in it. And so yes. when the defining moment comes, yes. that can we find somebody, you are ready. Yes. And so they said, this is the guy. Because even at SAH, SH, SHS, yeah. he's winning national French competition. O level and even A level, wow. you know, and he's he, he's a burden science material. So this is the guy we want. He can, you know, explain our products in French. He can teach in French. Wow. That's the guy we want. And so with that, when you are, I was, you know, they they called me up and said, uh, come and do another exam in, in Accra. 
I said, well, I won the competition. What can I exam? So they wanted who would top, who would be number one in that exam mm -hmm. is the person who win the fellowship to France. So I went, did that, came up on top. And wow. so four years, in my fourth year, they sent a fellowship to me. They sent me a visa. They sent me a plane ticket to France that, that covers my school fees, my books, my dormitory. I don't, they didn't want me to do any work, you know, apart Food from scholarship. study. Yeah. And on the day when your mates were graduating. Yes, I was on okay. the, I was on the airplane to France. Look at that. Yes. Arrival at France, was it what you expected? Oh, that was quite interesting. We landed in Nice and then we went to Paris. Because Paris, France is centralized. Yeah. You got to go to Paris yeah. for everything. <laughs> you know, just like we do here yeah. in Accra. So I was in Paris. And then they tell you what university, in this case Montpellier University, when are you leaving, blah, blah, paid everything, and the time came, you go straight to Montpellier. And in Montpellier, they had this thing where every weekend, they take all students, they bring students from all over. And then you go to different villages in France, you know, so you can learn the French culture, tasting yeah. wine, wow. Wow. everything. Eating Every French Saturday. bread and cheese. Yes, <laughs> immerse you in the, in the French culture. Yeah. Uh -huh. That, that's great. <clears throat> now, while you were in France studying chemical engineering, yes. another defining moment in your life is that your father comes. Yes. And says, my son. Yes. There's too many political changes back home. Yes. From here, go to America. Yes. Was it a tough decision to make? Because you're now coming to the end. You're a full chemical engineer. Yeah. I need to go back home. And yeah. Yeah, but my, I've always listened to my father. You know, be when well, we start, used to come home and collect school fees. <laughs> or what. So I respected him. And he, you know, in the book, you see him. He was a central figure. He said, hey, when you come, I'll be happy. But this is what I want you to do. You know, go to U.S. You know, excel there like you excelled in France. So I went to the U.S. I went to MIT, the you, best you, school. You think, it was a, you think it was a good decision? That was one of the best decisions, defining moments in my life. Because right now, instead of just book knowledge, instead of theoretical, instead of staying in the laboratory, now you are in America, not only at the best school, but you are in industry. Putting you in industry in America, where you see machines, you work with machines, you are, you are among the best, the best, with the best in science and engineering. Particularly when they ask you to solve a problem. Well, thank you very much and welcome back. But Doc, you know, we were at the point where Dad says you should go to America. Yes. You've explained going to America and how probably at that time it was the best thing. Yes. Giving you the best opportunities yes. ever. Yes. Doc, Doc could, could France at the time have yes. given you the opportunity America gave you? Uh, no. It looks like a yes and no answer. No, no, no. no. Uh, because France, like UK, is very arist aristocratic. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. if your dad rules to a technician, that's it. Mm -hmm. uh, all those kind of, you know, little, little, little rules. Mm -hmm. well, your dad was a professor, it's, a professor. it's impossible for you to become a professor. Okay. You know. mm -hmm. uh, what did your dad do in engineering? Did mm -hmm. he do this? Has he written books? So there was that in, 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 in okay. France and UK. Yeah. Well, uh, but in, in America, it's meritocracy. You could do it. Meritocracy. So, Nothing to do with what your dad did? No. You know, so that's why a lot of people did their best work when they got to America. Einstein is an example. 
you know, mm -hmm. teaching at Princeton and helping with nuclear reactor. And then Von Braun, you know, the first person that set up NASA and built rockets to space, Von Braun, also from Germany. I'm a, an associate fellow of American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics. Well, that's the group that design airplanes and, you know, so besides being a chemical engineer, I'm also in that. Thing. Okay. And Von Braun was the first person. And the Wright brothers that created the airplane, yep, 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 they were yep. members and full of that organization. I belong to that. There are not many black people who are in that organization. Now, there are only about five of us at the very top. Isaiah Blanks in the one I talked about mm -hmm. uh, at NASA, yeah. myself, you know, because of nanotechnology. Yeah. So these are elite groups that you can be in. You see how airplane engines work. You see all that stuff. And also, when I was at MIT, the professors paved the way for me to get into industry because they are consultants to industry. Yeah. You know? And so by the time, you should always be prepared. You should always, you know, opportunity comes knocking once. When the opportunity to go to Corning, where fiber optics was invented, they have looked all every place and said, what guy can we bring in? You know, when somebody from outside that can come in, us. they don't even look at color. So when I went, they said, we've been trying to do this for 15 years. 15? One five. We cannot solve that problem. How do we move fiber optics from the lab to commercialization industry? Dr. Mensa, we think you can do it. You know, you know I, mean? I was the only black person among the four inventors. You know, and one of the co-inventors, Peter Shu, said, hey, doc, I think you can take it from here. And so that 15 year problem, I solved it in one year. Wow. Yes, it was a big deal. Doc, now, you know, being black, we are, you know, religiously drunk. I mean, did you get a vision? Did you, did you dream it? Or it was just hardcore calculations? <laughs> well, we did, we did the mathematical computation we call finite element analysis. We did all, we did all the theory that predicted what we call vortices inside the applicator. So we knew all that theoretically, but... A grown form, now we have to apply. Yeah. So, you know, God gives wisdom. Mm. You know, I tell everybody, you know, so. I decided to make the applicator transparent so I can see what's happening. Instead of black box goes in, come out. That was another best decision because when I did that for the first time, I could simulate the non-Newtonian flow with vortices, recirculation around or you know around the fiber. Now, lo and behold, I put some dice in and I can see what is happening. I can videotape it and put it on the television screen and watch it, you know. I was working on it like 24-7. So when I put it on video, I said, wow, this is the problem. So I redesigned the entire system. So when you redesign the entire system of application, you know, when you're patent with your name, Thomas O. Mensa, there. Very few people get to have seven patents in fiber optics in six years. Sometimes it takes five years to get one. But, but do, I mean, do you realize what you have done? I mean, you have revolutionized information. Yes. That we knew at that time that if we can commercialize, take it to industry and bring the cost of fiber optics from one dollar a meter to the same as copper wires at 10 cents, then we can replace all copper wires in America and the world and create new companies and new industries. 
That's how Google was born. That's, that's, that's nuclear war in information. Yes. That's how Facebook was born. Wow. That's how Amazon was born. YouTube. Because we make a picture. You can take the picture, but it stays in your phone. Let fiber optics allow you to the laser-based transmission of data, allow you to send it. And we were the first to do that in the world, four of us. I mean, uh, let's say you're working in an office or somewhere and you hear ping, as in somebody just received a message. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, does it strike you that you're lucky so-and-so, you know, had I not done that, you wouldn't have gotten it. Exactly. We tell everybody, from Facebook to Bill Gates at Microsoft to Jeff Bezos at Amazon. You know, my book is on Amazon. Mm -hmm. He can't even sell the books through that. So that's, that, that is it. But I said, I'm glad when a, a grandmother get a picture of a little baby and put a smile on their face, whether they are in Ghana, they are in London, they are in China. Because that technology allows to send any picture, allows to send Instagram, it's like the YouTube videos amount that they are going to see. It allows you because when you press send on your cell phone, it's in China. When you press send, it's in UK. You press send, it's in America. Well, 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 change of scenery, change of scenery. The good Lord decided to shower us with his blessings. And so we had to come in. Well, we'll say thank you very much for Golden Tulip for allowing us to use our cameras in their premises. So we shot first in the garden, got to finish off in the foyer here in this mini library. So, hey, if you see the scenes have changed, it's because the weather has changed. But you know what? If you're following the show from the beginning, we got to the point where I was completely marveled. Imagining if I had created, you know, this technology where Facebook can ride upon, Google can ride on, and, you know, that old lady in the village can ping, get a picture of a grandchild far away in Australia, put a smile on their face. I'll be floating, doctor. And uh, this achievement and accomplishment, like you are saying, is what made me a fellow of the U.S. National Academy of Inventors. Wow. That's a big deal because mm -hmm. out of the 166 inventors worldwide, three black people. And I'm one of the three. Part of the fellows? Yes. That's major. The other one is from IBM, president of IBM. This pin here, the green one, that says National Academy of Inventors. I usually wear it for some interviews or international stuff. So there are not many people with this pin, a pale pin. But when you achieved all that and you are recognized all over the world, you know, with accolades from every place, whether it's the Americans of Aeronautics and Astronautics, whether it's Americans of Chemical Engineers, what I is the African Scientific Institute, and then recently what I is the Ghana Institute of Engineers, and even the Kwame Nkrumah Genius Award. So the accolades come from all over the world. But then you don't sit still. You got to look at where we are in Ghana. You know, supposing my colleagues, Bill Gates, or Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook, or Jack Twitter say, oh, how is it going in Ghana? What do I see? You know, technology-wise, where is Ghana? Mm -hmm. Other than you. You will know, you know you've know, you done these mm -hmm. things. Without you, there won't be Facebook. There won't be Google. What was going on in your own hometown? So this is what keeps me running at this stage. When I met Nana, and I sent him the 100-day agenda, for innovation to move the country forward. In New York, I came back and followed it. And I, on that agenda, 100-day agenda, three things I will mention. Factories in all regions, actually 1D1F, right? Power generation, including renewable power. 
And then you heard that we were using drones to go and deliver drugs. Mm -hmm. That Baumia, Dr. Baumia, you know, was on TV talking. Like, oh, that is on the agenda. Oh. And the drone is very, very important. And as you see, at some point, I showed the latest drone in the world where the bird actually flap its wings while it's flying, like a bird. That's a drone. Which means this bird can carry what we call payload, you know, video cameras, sensors, I can take pictures of targets and just bring it to my cell phone, bring it to my laptop. Can tell the drone what to do, what to look for. Whether I'm using it on the border security, looking at the borders, who is crossing, who shouldn't cross. Or whether I want to use it in the military where the drone can shoot missiles. I, I think every chief should have a drone. Oh, I agree so with you. You don't have to be walking in the bush, so, you know, that's a, surveillance. That's a great example. Like, you just sit in yeah, the palace. You, yes. Send it yes. three, four kilometers out. Yeah. And, come back. and he'll look at it for you and tell you what's happening. Even Galam say, you know, when we, when we are trying to chase them, he put a drone there. He, he said, oh. Where's the guy? You know, I said, Oh, <laughs> why should I come here? You know, he's in this forest. Mm -hmm. you, you, can, you can locate him. But that's one. Like the Israeli Prime Minister was talking about drone technology like we have it. You can use it in filming. You can use to watch your land, like you said, in mm -hmm. Chieftain Sea. You can use it in agriculture. We call precision agriculture, where the drone flies and determine what part of that land needs fertilizer, down to the single, whether you're growing cocoa or you're, uh, whatever you're doing, can't, uh, down to a single tree, can tell this needs fertilizer. That's artificial intelligence. This needs irrigation. You know, let's turn on the spring, sprinklers. And that's what the Silicon Valley... Yes, of Ghana is going to. That's, that's what Silicon Valley will pull it all together. So Silicon Valley, Ghana... Yes. In, was your idea? Yes. It's on the 100-day 100, 100 agenda. But I decided to do it quickly. And I was right in making that decision. Because when I did it seven months ago, and there was a competition where Google would take the Artificial Intelligence Center. Google saw the Silicon Valley of Ghana and said, hey, this is where we got to go. So Google is moving the Artificial Intelligence Center to be done this year. Five countries. We have Ivory Coast. You have Kenya. You have Nigeria. You have South Africa. You have Ethiopia. But Google chose Ghana because of the Silicon Valley of Ghana. Where you go there now, SiliconValleyGH.com, you see artificial intelligence training. You know, you see our goal to train 300,000 students, SHS, in software development. That's, 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 that's why I'm interested in. Yes, because Dubai want to train one million, we'll train 300,000. So that the kids coming up will know what AI is, what artificial intelligence is, what augmented reality is, what virtual reality is. You know, those software is what drives a drone is hardware and software. The software is the AI that drives the drone. It can say, oh, that tree there needs fertilizer, or that side of the line needs water, or that side, you know, just like the Prime Minister of Israel, uh, of Israel was saying. Now, Ghana, because of Silicon Valley of Ghana, it's now one of the five countries, what five cities in the world to have the AI. Paris is one. Zurich is one. Israel is one. And then United States Silicon Valley. Now Ghana is, is, is the other one. So this is serious development. Anything that I do now, I had to do this. And Google AI coming in is a big price for Ghana. I did that Silicon Valley free of charge. Didn't charge nothing to nobody. Why? Because I want the top scientists, top leaders, top business in, in America. You, mean, you can say, hey, Ghana is the place. This is what differentiates Ghana. 
And so the AI is a big deal. I want all children all the way to top universities. When I said that uh, drones would deliver drugs and would deliver medicine to rural areas, I didn't want to stop there. I want to create a competition between the five universities, Kwame Nkrumah University, Legon, Aviation Sciences, Cape Coast, University of uh, Tamale, and Aseshi. I want them all to compete. Who can build the best room? That's made in Ghana. I'll be there advising them and all that. But they got to build this drone and compete. They do that in America, drone competition. In America, you see about and Ronaldics, that associate fellow off. We do that with all the big universities. So can you imagine students building drone, competing? They are always ahead. I want that to happen in Ghana, all the universities. You come in, take this is my drone, fly it, and let's see what, it's, what it can do. Cape Coast University, you know, you put your drone there, let's see what, it's, what it can do, you know? And then who will come to the top? We give them a price. You know, whether it's 100,000 or whatever it is, that drone competition is what is going to move Ghana. And then the children, drone has hardware, it has software. Mm -hmm. They go to train 300,000 students, mean our kids are going to be at that level of sophistication where they can talk about AI, artificial intelligence, even at that level. So our SHS will be just wonderful. Our university students will be competing. And when that drone competition gets large, I would even bring the other schools in America and somewhere to come and compete with them. That's how you move Ghana. Well, because these people are doing things that are being done in the advanced countries. Mm. Even Bill Gates will say, oh, wow, drone competition in Ghana? You know, Jeff Bezos, oh, whoa. All these guys. And I was on the presidential delegation to China, trying to bring some of the Chinese, you know, top business guys mm. in software and AI also to Ghana. I already have the West. You know, I have mm. Google, I have Facebook, I have Apple. Apple is a trillion dollar company, trillion dollar. I'm one of the executives on the board of, of Silicon Valley of Ghana. So what we've done in a short period, in less than a year, is dramatic, is consequential for the future of Ghana. And we are doing all this because we want all the top people to come here. You know, Jack Ma who come here, the president met him in China. You know, Alibaba chairman and, and all those, they're mm -hmm. going to come here. And then we got the West. So we have the best. That would differentiate Ghana. Got to have that. Mm -hmm. I build drones. Well, I build drones that you cannot even detect. Oh. I use nanotechnology materials to build them. So when it's flying, you know, you can't tell where the drone is. I build that for the Pentagon. Well, so when you're building drones that you can say, oh, I want drone, to, drone technology to come here in a serious way. I want drone competition. You know, so that... Are drones the future, though? Yes. Drones are the f all kinds, like the big one, which we show, the one that flaps mm -hmm. its wings, and the stable one, the quadruped, and all that. Mm -hmm. They are the future because when we say autonomous vehicle that drives themselves, that's what it is autonomous driven artificial intelligence. But the drones flies and let you see things that you cannot do. You know, you're a chief, you want to check yours, like you pointed out. Yeah. You can't let it do that. Come back here and give you the data. We use that in survey. You do that everywhere. And so drones are the future. Those of us who are leaders in that technology, who have actually built drones hands on, you know, because I don't want it just to just be buying them from somewhere else. As a state, Doc, as a state, are we embracing the Silicon Valley in equal measure? As, it's, 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 because Silicon Valley is a big deal. Yes. Are we embracing it equally? People are beginning to understand it, especially when Google says, hey, I'm coming to Ghana because of this. You know, mm -hmm. stability of government, that's fine. Yeah. But technology, you've got to have technology before I choose you. Yeah. Why don't I go to South Africa? You know, they have change of government, mm -hmm. stability and all that. Who has the technology? Now you got Silicon Valley built by Dr. Thomas Mensah. And so we put it there, even South Africa. We are wondering, how did Ghana got it? 
What's in Ghana? As I said, all this because I wanted to do it so that my colleagues who are in the technology space would say, wow, there's something in Ghana that's serious. They got the AI. You know, the president can talk about it all over the world because that's real. That's, that's serious. Doc, I know you also, as part of your invention is the nanotechnology. Yes, thing. yes. Uh, in, in, in English, not in the science. Yeah. What, what is nanotechnology? Well, nanotechnology is a technology that allows you to operate at the atomic level. Okay. In other words, you're operating at atomic level before you even build the product. Without losing power? If it is cell phone or whatever it is, you are looking at the atomic level. One serious application where I can start from the atomic level is I will make a cell phone battery that will last one week without charging. See, every night you got to charge it, yeah. and then you are talking phone dead. Mm. Nanotechnology is now going to make you batteries like that. I did that in, in, in America, and America will use that to dominate the world again, just like we use uh, fiber optics, and they are dominating, you know, in terms of technological leadership. I am the author of that book. I select who participated in that book. I have five Chinese professors in South China Sea do the, the second chapter, which is nanocatalysis, because I thought they were the best. I have them do that. Twelve chapters. So my chapters are on missiles mm -hmm. and rocket motors. How can you put nanomaterials in the rocket motors? You see when the, the, the space shuttle is going, you see all that heat and the fire coming in. What material can withstand it? Nanotechnology will give you that. Have applications and missiles, intercontinental ballistic missiles, space, spacecraft, satellites, application all over. The only black person in the world to have that book. And that book is used to teach PhD students in China, in Australia, in UK, all the universities, in America, MIT, everywhere. Authored by a black person from Ghana. So this is serious. And so I want to have that Silicon Valley of Ghana to be the, the centerpiece, the place where people will go from Ghana to look for innovation. Mm -hmm. You know, when I just spoke at uh, Digital Center, I was showing them what can come, you know, at the Digital Center. Yeah. I spoke of what's called Agile in Africa, you know, so they could see, oh, now we can make drone here, assemble it here in Ghana at the Silicon Valley. So a little kid say, oh, I'm going to Silicon Valley to study how I can make drones. A little kid will say that as SHS. I have the software, I can design software and use it to direct the drone. When the drone is flying, the software tells it where to go. And the hardware is the one that takes the pictures of targets. In the war theater, the big drone, in the war theater, the big drone looks at all the targets and say, this is the one I'll fire my missile on. You know? Oh, this one, there are people in, you know, homes. I don't have to fire anything. The drone will tell you, in the, you know, in the war theater, so you can discriminate against targets and hit the, the right targets, oh. you know? So this nanotechnology is going to give an edge. You know, people say, why don't you do all that in Ghana? I got to get Ghana i got to work with the government to make sure that Ghana is at a certain level whereby you can even look at weapons. We are not looking at weapons no. now. <laughs> oh, just the basics. Yeah. What am I saying? Mm -hmm. The basics. So that at least we have the basics for agriculture, you know, for fighting pollution, the basics for our hospitals, just the basics. Oh. The Silicon Valley that's moving Ghana. I have about 12 active projects there. Oh, going on. One of the active projects is what I showed you earlier this morning. Is this uh, MRO. MRO means Maintenance and Repair Organization. It's an airport, but it has the MRO attached to it. If Ghana wants to have its own airline, it's good to have the MRO too, so that it can inspect the airline before it takes off. That's how you compete with Ethiopia, Airlines, South Africa Airlines, because they have the MRO, you know. 
Isaiah Blankson, one of my advisors on Silicon Valley, said, put it in Kumasi, put it in the middle. You know, we put it in the middle. This is a half a billion dollar asset. We've raised half a billion dollars for this. Put it there so that no, none of those people can cross on the border, mm. come in, you know. Mm, okay. yeah. mm. So, so in my mind, this is so important. Centurion has given the land 23,000 acres for this technology. I've convinced Boeing to come to Ghana again to train people from Kwame Nkrumah University, people from Legon Aviation Sciences, all the universities, you know, and even as, as a, what do you call it, high school graduates. So they can make uh, big money while they are fixing and repairing engines. This will move Ghana forward, you know, seriously. It's very strategic. Within West Africa, is there any such yes, thing? You are right, Nana. The whole West Africa, there's not a single MRO. So all the 15 countries in ECOWAS don't have this maintenance and repair organization. We want to put the first in Ghana. So if you have a faulty plane, there's nowhere in West Africa? None. You got to go to Ethiopia. Whoa. If you send two planes down there for a period of Ethiopia to keep for one week charge, maybe a million dollars. Or you got to go to South Africa. So as we decide to do this Ghana Airways, got to have the MRO. That MRO will make us competitive. Mm. Competitive against British Airways, competitive against any other airline. Because before the plane takes off, they all fly to, 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 to this uh, aircraft maintenance center in Kumasi. As soon as they get there, the engineers do inspection of that airplane. They look at the instruments. That's very important because the pilot relied on the instruments to fly. Yeah. I'm at this altitude. You know, this is what I have to do. My fuel tank. You know, so all the information is coming on there. So they check all the instruments. Once they finish it, oh, that one is bad, let's replace it. So that they, the pilot be well informed about anything in the air, air, aircraft. Oh. So inspection of the instrument, inspection of the body of the airplane. On the Delta airline I, when it was taken off from, 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 from New York. And then that Delta airline, the landing gear caught on fire. Wow. So immediately the pilot said, no, we are not going to fly with this and get in the air. You know, they will be able to solve. But now we will inspect that airline and see that the landing gear is faulty and replace it. That goes for everything in the airplane. That's the technology we are bringing to Ghana on this MRO. Hmm. Very interesting. But then, you know, we, we have this uh, culture where things stay on paper and dusty on shelves. Is this thing going to leave paper and get on the ground? Well, luckily the new aviation minister, Kofi Adda, he has jumped in, moving very quick. You know, he came to me, oh doc, I'm you know, having a little presentation, you know, on the airline to represent, blah, blah, he stopped coming, I sat down one hour. He's jumping, both feet, moving quickly. You know, mm -hmm. you know, I told him I've lost well, six months, you know, he said, no, 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 we got to do this. Now help me, you know, I want to visit Boeing, the United States, with your contacts. Help me do that. I'll take some of my people, go look at it. For myself, the MRO, I said, all right, I'll set it up. We go check it out. We're going to do this because we have their commitment. And guess what? When we do this, you're not going to wait for four hours to find an aircraft to go to, you know. Say, say if you're going to some funeral in Kumasi or whatever, you're not going to wait. Now, I remember one time I couldn't go because uh, there was no, you know, because of this lack of MRO. Mm -hmm. Because you have the same plane that flies to Benin, that flies to the other places, where is it going to be checked? Mm. And then when you add the national airline, that becomes even more important. Yeah. So the MRO is important. Santini said, hey, we are giving you guys 23,000 acres to put this down here. It's going to bring technology, and most important, it's going to create 400,000 jobs. Wow. Ghana needs jobs. Yeah. 400,000, this is the one of the single important projects that will create jobs, 400,000. You know, and those jobs, you can distribute it. 
you know, you give them to the Zongo people in the Zongo, you give them hope. You give it to all the people in, Kuma, in Ashanti region, and the school, high school students who come all over to come and work here. Well, we give them certificate, they can fix engines. Well, I mean, Georgia Tech, as the aerospace engineers go to their classroom, you have the engine sitting right in front of the door. The shroud is taken off, they see real engine. You know, so to, you know, they see it. That's what we are fixing. That's what we got to bring here to Ghana. And Ghana will be the hub for MRO, the hub for all these planes to come here. They pay landing fees, they do all that. They fix their engines, they fly to Burkina, they fly to Mor Mor Mauritania, they fly to Morocco, they fly to everywhere. All the engines. You know, they'll be trained both on the mm -hmm. French Airbus as well as, you know, Boeing, Boeing jets. The largest corporation in aircraft manufacturing is Boeing. They are partners. Wow, that's impressive. That's impressive. So, so what, what will be next? I mean, you set up the Silicon Valley. What, what's next for the Silicon Valley? Well, what, what's next is to push all the active projects there. You know, there are several active projects there. There's even some in solar. You know, renewable is a big mm -hmm. thing, you know. So there's some in solar where we put a solar plant somewhere. You know, the Norwegians are here now talking to me about where to put a solar plant. So you get a renewable energy plant, so, okay. you know. And renewable energy is a whole new area for us. So there is that. There's, this, there's the Google artificial intelligence, you know. So there'll be so many projects going on that's going to move us forward. And the fact that we have Apple executives, we have Microsoft to get executives. Microsoft, yes. We have all these guys. That will mean that Ghana will be the leading technology country. You know, once we do that, you know, I, the only country I want to help is South Africa. But we can get Ghana moving quickly. So, so Silicon Valley of Ghana, where you go to find cutting edge stuff for Ghana, whether it's AI or whether it's virtual reality, whether it's autonomous vehicle, good, whether it is drones, you know, mm -hmm. no matter what, that's where you go. You can't get it anywhere else. Wow. And there are five universities are also part of this. And it's well equipped? Of course, because we are, we are, we've brought what we did. We didn't do like other people, they want to do something in Ghana, they didn't go and build a whole new building for 20 million. Mm. When we came, what I'm doing is to leverage the resources. You get all these kind of buildings at Ligon, why don't you use the aviation scientists and get them involved? You got mm. all these, you know, engineering centers at Kwame Nkrumah University, why don't you, you know. So these are places already where we will help them move their AI labs in the different universities and work with Google. If I were to build a whole new, that would take me five years. Wow. And I launched it at Kofi Annan Center because it's, you know, you know, when you do it in one university, the other university may not participate. I did on neutral ground. <laughs> <laughs> so all the universities, you want tech, go there. Yeah. Wow then Google can work with you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's a fair question. So are you back home now or are you just setting up your silicon and you're checking out? No, I'll spend at least, uh, every time I'll spend two months, you know, here, you know. But I want to make sure all these projects are moving. One day are moving, I'll come here, spend six months at a time, seven months at a time, whatever. You know, make sure it works. And invite Bill Gates and invite all those major players to come to Ghana. Okay, don't go, we are coming straight back. But hey, you know, the good stuff comes in black too. Well, thank you very much for staying and welcome back, Doctor. As they say, Ghana, you've done, you've done all. 
you know, you probably need to retire from retirement to get a little country home somewhere on the hill or by the beach. Just read comic books. <laughs> what, what more do you want to do? Well, I, I seven uh, patents. Yeah, yeah, and four books on innovation and all that stuff. Being one of the top in the world, but you can't still still when your country. You can see where your country should be, and they are not there yet. You cannot sit down, you know, you cannot be selfish and sit down. You got to work hard to move your country forward, the entire country, mm. you know. As I said in one article, China has moved 600 million people out of poverty, 300 billion to middle class. The U.S. hasn't done that. Well, how do we move? See, if you do, Ghana is what, 30 million? Mm. Right? Or 40. We do the things I'm talking about. We can move entire Ghana out of poverty. Entire Ghana to middle class. You know, like you were telling me. Mm. And me, entire Ghana. People have jobs all over. So that's what, like you said, I can sit down, hey, forget about it. Forget about this thing. You know, every country, South Africa, everybody. I've been invited to go to, there's something called Timeless Women in Kenya. They are doing a big uh, conference on women. They are bringing uh, Michelle Obama to be the keynote. They are bringing me to be a keynote no. in Kenya because of technology. Technology is what moves a country forward. Without the technology, you'll be walking on oh, iron ore, don't know the iron ore is there. You be being your, your fisherman's boat and don't know that the oil is here. But the satellite, the sea, oh, there's oil over there. Let's, let's drill it. That's technology. Mm -hmm. Technology was all oh, beyond gold, there's this mineral. Technology sees that, how much is there, and what it takes to do it. Technology is what is going to move us forward. So we leverage our minerals and get the technology. We'll be there in a minute. I'm just here to help guide that. Mm. You know, I'm famous. You know, of course. Yes, <laughs> I mean, you go any place in the world. You know, but then what about the what about your people? What about the people you can relate to? So when the average guy that I see, you know, can get past, can get to that level, we got to use technology to get them there. That's very, very important. That's how I see it. Mm. You know, the previous, go I mean, when I was growing up, you know, when I say, hey, sometimes I just go to the farm and use kerosene lamp to study. People can't even believe that. Oh, he once used kerosene lamp to study in the villages when he go on, you know, on vacation. And now he's one of the top people in this field, in the world. You know, some people who never use kerosene lamps, mm -hmm. you know, I have colleagues sit at the MIT, they are at the top, you know, they don't need nothing. And you are able to operate at the same level. That means you have consistency, you're ethical, you're serious, you want to make sure that things change. When they give you a problem, you want to solve it. That's why we are doing these things. Is there hope for a happy home, Ghana? Yeah, I think so far, the fact that uh, people have listened to me, the fact that the 100-day agenda is going on, the fact that when, and we're getting results, we did the Silicon Valley and Google is coming here, so there's hope. But we got to get the entire country moving, you know, the entire country. Because I'll be honest with you, not everybody get exposed to the things I've been exposed to. Not everybody, black or white. Not everybody. Oh, you can't work on this. This is for space. You can't work on this. You can't work on this. This is fiber optics. You can't work on this superconductivity. They don't let blacks in there. So after you've gone, you know, God has permitted you to be that in that environment and excel to be one of the top in the world. You got to use that to move your people, to move your country, to move your brothers, your sisters, to move them. So we do that. 
we will make tomato paste here. We will really can all these oranges. We have transportation systems in the country that's number one. We have an aircraft MRO. When we do that, made in Ghana, will not be a slogan. When I say made in Ghana, in all areas, in all areas, we will actually make, you see eyeglasses? Mm -hmm. We make it here. We will import it. Shirts, the thread for our shirts, like you said earlier, the cotton and all that, we we'll make it here. We will make machines here. We we'll make drones here. It's not that we see that because right now we see us all burning eye. It was done by the white man. But right now we're going to make it in Ghana. Well, mm -hmm. one show I talked about putting a steel plant in Yendi. Who manufactures steel? Who is steel no your Yendi now? To create jobs there, you know, in Yendi. Not mm -hmm. only jobs, but the steel, no, is what differentiates Malaysia from Ghana. They import the iron ore from us. Everything. Make the steel, turn the steel into cars. You see all these cars in, a, in Ghana, mm -hmm. all the trucks are on our road. They are made of steel. So Malaysia has chosen to do that and sell it. There's not a single building in Ghana that doesn't have steel. Not a single bridge that doesn't have steel. So Malaysia said, that's what we're going to do. They make the steel turn into cars, so they are selling millions of cars, making money, and we got independence at the same time. So I want to mention that there'll be that steel plant. I put it long term, that steel plant, we got to do it here. So you do steel, you can make your own cars. You know, mm -hmm. you don't have to import the stuff from so, somewhere. And ships, also made of steel. All the containers at the, at the uh, uh, Tema, made of steel. So once we get the level where we are making our own steel, we are making our own, we can even assemble airplanes if everything goes the way that I'm pushing. Airplanes will be assembled in Ghana. Because once you know how to MRO, you have to inspect them and put parts in it, the rest is easy. What are you t telling that parent, that teacher, that student that's watching this, who's probably not dreaming big? Yeah, first of all, uh, the book you, call, you mentioned earlier, yeah. the rice stuff comes in black. Two. It shows you the things in there shows you how to dream big. It shows you that there's no ceiling on your mind. Color has no... I go to places, Pentagon labs, military labs, that many, you know, blacks don't go. So there's no ceiling to what your mind can do. No ceiling. So I'm telling the parents, when they go and read that book online and all that, and look at what I've been done, the kid can achieve the same thing. Three things they need, believe in God, believe in themselves. Number one, work hard and consistently, persistently. Persevere in your chosen field, you know, that science is fun, that they can get into nanotechnology, that they can build drones, they can be part of the future. If Dr. Mensah is one of the fiber optic inventors, I too can do it, you know. So that's going to be permeate all the kids, their minds and all their surroundings. You know, you can still listen to your rap music. You know, I told the students, Have fun. you can listen to Shata Wale, you can listen to everybody. But at the end of the day, you got to take your math and science very serious. Now that we are bringing practical stuff, here in Ghana, you can take it serious. You should be proud to say, oh, I built this. You should be proud to say, well, I made this happen. So the book and the fact that, you know, I've, you know so I meet somebody, oh, I was watching your video, I was watching this. And I say, you see the video because of fiber optics. Oh, which, which, which we created. 
Everyone so, should dream big. Everybody should dream the big. The right stuff comes in, in black, black too. too. Well, 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 the legendary Dr. Thomas Mentor, famous inventor, blue blood Ghanaian, one of ours. Unfortunately, I don't have as much time as he's achieved in his life, and that's all I can get from him. But that's amazing. That gives us all a sense of pride and a sense of belonging. But I always give you the number before I go, 0244-366-2001, 0244-366-2001. That's Tanti's Fashion Day. Make my shirts for the show, so give him a call and get yourself a nice shirt. I want to say thank you so much to Doctor, but until I come to you again with another wonderful personality, thank you so much for watching and see you again.